Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry I was a few minutes late. I was busy talking. So I won't do it again, yeah. It's okay. So relax, chill. That's what we're here for. Um, so uh, welcome to the third Sunday of Advent. And we're going to be lighting some candles in, in just a minute. But we're going to start with our welcome. Um, so um, we'll say the um, yellow bits together. Is that right? The white the white bits. <laughs> well, I'm really grateful that Max did my tech because um, thought I should have worked that out beforehand anyway. So, shall we say together our welcome? Okay. Father God, thank you for this chance to worship you. Father God, we come to you with an expectation to be filled by your spirit. Father God, we pray that you will be blessed by our worship this morning. Father God, renew our hearts and help us to long for holy things unseen. Father God, pour out your spirit on us today. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome to everybody. It's good to have you here today. So Fleur is going to be preaching for us today. And we've got Rog and David doing our music. Thank you very much. And Max doing the tech. So we're in safe hands. Really good. So I've got some little um, helpers, Bo and Joy and Grace. And oh, another little helper down here. Tell me your name. Alice, do you want to come up and help me light my candle? We'll have all the children up together. So we're going to light this third candle. So we have one person to light it off there. There we go. So you can take it off there. There we go. And then if you want to give it to Grace. And Grace, would you like to light our third candle? So we light this candle for all of God's messengers, preparing the way for change. Signs pointing to a new age to come. God, as we wait for your promise, give light and give hope. Well done. Thank you very much. You can help blow it out at the end. We have to leave that one till next week. And that one is on Christmas Day. Okay? So come back at the end and you can you can blow it out for me. It's on a Sunday. That's fine. Okay, so our first our first song. Uh, Lord, let your love shine through me.
pray for our children.
And we for turn to our forgiving Father and we think about those areas of li our lives where we may not have done what you want us to. And we come back to you with open hearts and we lift to you those areas of life that we need your love and your guidance, Lord. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to the things now hidden in darkness and he will disclose the purposes of our hearts. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord, have mercy. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn away from the that we have thought and said and done. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace now and forever. Amen. We have our first reading. Neville. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 to 10. Joy of the redeemed. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendour of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendour of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be, it will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Today, oh, excuse me. Today's second reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 11. Jesus and John the Baptist. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who has come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, and those that have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear and the dead are raised and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in the king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, I'm more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Sorry, last verse. I tell you the truth. Among those born of the women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greatest is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Linda and, and Neville. And so we have Fleur to preach with us. 
So I just pray for Fleur before she begins. Lord, we give you thanks for Fleur and Fleur's gifts to interpret your word to us. May we open our hearts and our minds so that you can speak through Fleur to us. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's lovely to see you all. Lovely to see Dave as well. Nice playing. It's nice. So nice to have a saxophone, isn't it? It's so exciting. But yes. Um, oh, look at that. It looks really uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's not do that again. Let's ignore him. Um, so happy Advent. I hope it's all going well for you. Um, obviously it's a kind of stressful time, um, but actually I want to say no to the stress uh, and yes to the joy. Um, and we talk a lot about um, the, the joy of obviously Christmas time um, and, it, and it's kind of easy to get a bit bogged down about it. And, and, and actually it, it's quite depressing out there these days, isn't it? And there's a lot for us to be fighting against in our own lives, in the lives of our dear, dear friends who are suffering, and also in the lives of the community that we seek to serve. You know, it's really expensive and it's really cold. Um, but actually we park that and we put that on one side uh, and not to ignore it, but actually to give it its right place in our lives. We recognize that there are bad things, but we actually recognize that we have the glory of Jesus and we have the glory of the kingdom with us. So let's set our hearts right this morning. It's important um, that, that we give God the right place within our lives. Um, and it doesn't mean that we don't suffer and it doesn't mean we don't cry. But actually it means that in these times of joy we, we can celebrate and we can actually receive the joy that God's intended for us. He's intended for us to be joyful um, and to be happy. Um, I wanted to talk about waiting um, because obviously it's an advent and, and, and one of the definitions of advent is to be expectant, that expectant waiting. Uh, and I wonder if you want to reflect on your own lives. Are you good at waiting? Sometimes perhaps some people can be too good and not necessarily do anything because they're waiting. Um, <laughs> I think that's a bit like, it's a bit like me on certain things. Um, really love watching the TV actually um, and I could watch the TV all day long um, and not do anything and feel entirely unguilty about that but anyway um, I digress um, and also there's people who who can't wait literally cannot wait for anything must make something happen now um, and actually if it's not happening then we're not doing it we can't just wait and see what happens. You know, you have to kind of mobilise. Um, and actually what I want to say this morning is that the balance of waiting between action and, and inaction, that, that's a real faith journey. And that's how we mature as Christians, is we understand that, that balance between, uh, to use a Salvation Army phrase, faith in action and also being dependent and waiting on God to reveal his truth and his truth in our lives. Um, so this morning I really wanted to, to kind of challenge us all um, and ask what you all are waiting for in your lives and we're all at completely different points in our lives um, you know from the Sunday schoolers really 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 teeny teeny tinies um, to kind of the real kind of established trying to find a, you know, a real generous way <laughs> and actually it's it's not necessarily to be avoided you it's something to be celebrated but you know to see actually at what point are you in your life in terms of your age what are you waiting for because it's it's too much just to say well I've done I've done my lot um you know that that's not what God's intended for us either um, and the obvious answer in, in Advent is we're waiting for Jesus. We're waiting for Jesus' second coming. And obviously in Advent, we wait for Jesus' birth, along with all the other uh, prophets and messengers that we're given at this time. We heard from Isaiah. Um, but actually, I wanted to use this time to stress that waiting is a part of our Christian life and that it is a healthy practice. Um, and that we use the time of expectant waiting to bring us closer to God. 
But actually, and this is the challenge, what can we expectantly wait for if we don't have a vision of what our lives should be? If we haven't heard what God's vision for our life is? If we haven't heard what God's plan for us is? We've been given them the most wonderful example of anticipated waiting in John the Baptist. Um, and actually, it's really right that we hear about this at the time of year, because the more we hear about the prophets and the messengers, the more we understand how the tapestry of the whole of the kingdom of God comes together at this kind of single point. Now, John the Baptist was a man whose sole purpose was to prepare the way for Jesus, making a highway straight to our God for us, the redeemed, to join. And it is the passage in Isaiah um, that... that um, was it Neville who read that? Yeah, yeah. I was like, gosh, that was literally about seven minutes ago. <laughs> and uh, it's this passage that shows us what the fulfilment of that waiting will be. The eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Then will the lame leap like deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. And it is Jesus in our gospel reading read by Linda from Matthew who confirms that he is the fulfillment of our waiting. So that's scripture. So in scripture, you've got a promise of the Old Testament and you've got the realisation in the New Testament. So we know that we can trust that scripture is truth. Jesus replied in Matthew, go back and report to John what you have heard and seen. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. And so John the Baptist, who was at that time in prison, um, sent there by Herod, knew his waiting had been fulfilled. And actually, at the end of your life and at the end of John the Baptist's life, what reassurance to be proven um, that his life was fulfilled. The promises and the waiting that he had was fulfilled and to be told, not just to be told, um, by a friend of a friend but to have been told by Jesus and so we the redeemed we're the redeemed that Isaiah talks about can share also in this fulfillment we share the joy of the prophets and messengers of the old testament we are the redeemed invited onto the highway of holiness and we have waited and we have shared in this waiting and we have seen the fulfillment in Jesus and he's bigger than time and I know that we can feel somewhat um, distanced, perhaps from the Old Testament. I know I do. It just does seem very, very otherworldly. Um, and actually the Bible itself can seem like that. But I want us to remind us that when, when um, Isaiah talks about the redeemed, it's us that he's talking about. We're the ones that are enjoying the fulfillment of Jesus. We're the ones who can call upon his saving and his grace because we are the redeemed. We share in the realisation of John's preparations because we, the redeemed, were also there waiting. And that's what we're doing now in Advent. We're waiting. We're waiting for Jesus, whether or not it's Jesus the birth as a baby boy or whether it's Jesus coming again. And it is in Advent that we join with the prophets and messengers again in their waiting because Jesus is with us, our Emmanuel, Prince of Peace. But outside of Jesus' coming, what are you waiting for? What vision has God given you? What prophecy have you been given? I wonder if any of you can remember over the last couple of years, decades, whether or not you've been given a prophecy for your life, whether or not that prophecy has been revealed and fulfilled. I know in my life I've been given lots and lots of different words um, and I hope that John won't mind, but he was given a real significant word when we went, we were in church in London. We'd had, um, yeah, we'd had grace, hadn't we? Um, and we'd gone back to our church because we lived down here, but we'd gone back, I don't know if it was for her christening or something, or just to see John's mum, and John was praying, and he got a real clear word that he would be, um, his faith would be challenged. Was that, that was it, yeah. 
Um, and he taught, he said to me that this is what God has said. Well, that's fun. And you park it, don't you? You put it in your little pocket and you, and you reflect on it. Um, and I think it was really important because what it did was it wasn't necessarily to scare us, but it was something that we knew whatever was coming, God had planned. It was his will because God had said that we would be challenged. And then I think it probably would have been in a matter of months that we were pregnant with Joy and then found out that Joy had Down syndrome. So without that preparation, without that highway of holiness, actually it would have been easy for us to say that this has been done to us rather than this has been done for us. And so for me, prophecy is just such a special, special bonus about being a Christian. Um, and I really do want us this morning to think about prophecies and words that we've had in the past. And I want us to thank God for those prophecies that have been realised. And I also want us to remember those prophecies that haven't yet been realised and to see how we might draw closer to God in a closer relationship with him and see where they might be coming to fulfilment over the next year. I think also I don't necessarily have a clear vision for my future. There's times in my life where I have, where God has said to me, don't do this now, do this then. Um, but that's not necessarily the case now. Um, and I've been praying about that a lot this week because I know that God's, we've been talking about vision and waiting. Um, and I've been saying, well, I wonder what I'm waiting for. And I think what's really clear is sometimes you are exactly where God needs you to be. Um, and actually what your vision and what the realisation of that is that you're a servant um, and where you are exactly where God needs you to be. And I think for me, that's probably the case in terms of, uh, you know, the children being so young um, that actually God wants me to be a servant right now. And I am probably a bit annoyed that I'm like, no, no, no. I really want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Um, you know, God, uh, John hears that all the time, and he just kind of goes, oh, okay, fine, yeah, I've probably, probably got enough going on right now for that, nope, nope, nope. You know, and that, and that perhaps is that waiting bit where I'm not so good at it, I'm pushing, 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 and I don't hear anything. Well, that's probably because I'm where God wants me to be right now, but that's not to be said that I don't have these quiet, quiet little voices that in 10, 15, 20, 30 years, might then be realised. Um, so actually the challenge is for me as much as it is for you to, to thank God for the position I'm in now but to be made available for that prompting in the future. And I kind of, I, I bring this back to John the Baptist in that he knew a Messiah would come. He knew blind would the blind would receive sight, the lame would walk, the deaf would hear and the dead would be raised because he trusted in the scriptures. And as he, as, as we all wait, John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. He baptised people, he was obedient, he spoke about the coming of Jesus. He was waiting, but he wasn't inactive. And that comes back to my question right at the beginning. What do you like when you're waiting? Are you good at waiting? Too good at waiting? Um, or, or not so good that you just rush forward? So there's a risk that without a vision without a plan and knowing what God's plan is for us, we don't have anything to wait on. And actually we can run around like headless chickens going from pillar to post. And uh, it says in Proverbs, without a vision, the people will perish. And so I want to kind of just reassure you that any vision you have is a fulfilment Sorry, any vision you have and its fulfilment is something you can trust God in. And, and we can receive that vision and, and we can pray for it and we can ask friends what they might think, trusted Christian friends. And in Psalm 135, it says, I wait for the Lord. I wait and put my hope in his word and I'm sure that's what John the Baptist did. He waited and he put his hope in those in that in that prophecy from Isaiah. 
but let's not wait too long. Let's not be inactive. Let's pray and ask God and trust his word and pray with others and keep trusting and that we know that God's words are always fulfilled and he has plans for you and he has plans for us. You know, that's wonderful passage in Jeremiah. You know, there's, there's plans for us to prosper, not for us to be afraid. There are plans for our hopes and our future. And so we trust in these words. We know they are true because they've been fulfilled by Jesus. And so I challenge all of us, me, me included, to ask and to wait expectantly. Thank you. I'm so blessed to have Fleur to speak to us. Thank you. And I've heard that at St Thomas's now here and really, really spoken to me. And I just wonder, actually, in the silence, as we rest in, in God's love and God's presence, you know, can we just close our eyes for a minute and just think, is there anything that we're, we're waiting for? Is there anything that we need to grasp? Is there anything that we need to just pay attention to, to hear God speaking amidst everything? And feel, feel free to shout out if there's something that speaks to you. Gracious God, just help us to wait, help us to listen, help us to turn towards you and walk towards you at this time. Amen. I'm 
Jill's leading today, and so when I had what I thought might be a word from God or a reminder from God, I went to Jill to check that it was okay for me to come and speak, because that's what we do as a family. Uh, we were bold, and we say, actually, I think I may have heard from God, Jill, is it okay that I share that? I don't get any extra privileges just because I'm the rector. But um, I think the word we heard from Fleur uh, today was... was powerful because it was the right word at the right time um, and I know some of your stories I'm privileged enough to know some of your stories I know for some of you that was absolutely the word at the right time but also for us as God's people in Bedhampton one of the frustrations of being a church leader is I'm 10 years ahead of you and what I mean by that is I see God's vision for this place in a decade's time um, and because of my nature and my personality, I want to be there now. You know. <laughs> and we heard this morning about the waiting, and it's really been a message for me over the last year about the waiting. Um, but God doesn't leave us, as we were being told, doesn't leave us just there. And actually, um, if you look around, if you're as frustrated as me about where we are as a church and you want to be there now, if you look around... And today's example in Fleur was just another time. There are green shoots. I may, you know, we may not be able to run a holiday club right now that Max wants to run a holiday club, but actually what we were able to do we could, was a green shoot and you could see the blessing on the community. And so I want to say we need to double down on prayer. We need to hear what Fleur says and re realise that that promise has been fulfilled in Jesus. And actually... We are a church who's God's got a plan for. Next year, um, because of what God said to me today, I'm gonna we're gonna have um, a period of prayer, and uh, we will gather as God's people over an extended period of time, and we will pray for His vision in this place. I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Max. And Mike's going to lead us in our prayer today. The response is shown on the screen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we prepare for Christmas, we recall John the Baptist, preparing the way for the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Help us to give time to pause for quiet, thought and prayer, to reflect upon the wonder of your love and permit the story of our Saviour's birth to enter our hearts and minds. May our joy be deeper our worship more sincere, and our lives worthier for all that you have done for us through the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Lord, thank you for this precious time that we share in your presence this morning. Open our hearts to receive your Holy Spirit as we pray and speak to each one of us during this time of prayer and reflection. In a world with an intricate and beautiful web of life, save us, Lord, from carelessness and lack of foresight. In a world with varied and vulnerable wildlife, save us, Lord, from plundering and cruelty. In a world with fresh waters and cleansing oceans, save us, Lord, from wanton pollution. In a world where forests protect the air we breathe and the wildlife we enjoy, save us, Lord, from thoughtlessness that drives us to destroy them. In a world whose fruits are rich and plentiful, save us, Lord, from waste and greed. We pray for your church throughout the world, the great family to which we belong. In your power, enable all Christian leaders to respond to the challenges of the 21st century. We pray to you, Lord, on behalf of all people, throughout the world denied the freedom to practice their Christian faith. Many suffer imprisonment and some martyrdom. May their courage set faith alight in other lives. Thank you for Max and Susie, Jill, Fleur, Polly and other worship leaders. Please assure them of your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, fountain of love, power and justice, the God who cares for people who are suffering, grant us today your guidance and wisdom so that we can fully understand and respond to the suffering of others. We bring before you, Lord, people who are suffering in consequence of war, violence, oppression, injustice, famine, poverty, homelessness and natural disaster. Lord, gather them all in your loving arms and grant them the hope that only you can bring. Show us also how we can contribute to helping all who are in need. We pray for your intervention in the conflict in Ukraine. In your infinite wisdom, bring about a ceasefire and a just and permanent peace for the peoples of Russia and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the residents of Leicester Avenue. Be with them in their daily lives and give them the opportunity to be inspired by the Advent story. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our community in Bedhampton. Thank you for the open spaces we are able to enjoy. Help us to share friendship with our neighbours and support people who are known, who we know are experiencing difficulties. Guide us to bear witness in our community to the cross of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for people known to us in our church who are unwell or who will otherwise benefit from your reassurance and support. Grant to them all peace in their discomfort, distress and pain. We also offer our prayer for people who grieve for the loss of a family member or friend. Surround all who grieve with your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Notices. So, um, we've got a carol concert tonight at St Thomas's at six o'clock. Be there or be square. So that's the first thing. Now, secondly, we are having a quiz next Saturday. And I'm just saying that I've only got one other person on my team. So if anybody wants to come and join my team, I need some bright people. I could do the theology questions, but probably not anything else. Theology and sport, I could do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any general knowledge people come and join my team that'd be really cool um so that's next week um and so just you need to contact deb in the office she'll put you on a team if you haven't got one or it's teams of six six there we go <laughs> yeah but you can't have an unfair advantage just saying just saying so anything else family wise Family news wise. Oh, that's okay. So I've got, uh, next I've got our children back, but I don't know if they are. I've seen one of them, but not the other, not anybody else. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, no, that's fine. No. Oh, we wait for them to come back and see what they've been doing. What did you do, Joy? Did you make anything when you were out in the other, what did you do? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Do you think they'll bring some things back for me to look at? No. Did you? I'm asking, did you just sit eating popcorn then? <laughs> Sounds like a good time. <laughs> oh, let's have a look then. Come up. Show us what you've done. This is good. Mobile, isn't it? Do you want to tell me? Do you want to tell me what's on on your mobile? An angel. Got a star and a dove. There we go. And a manger as well. So the dove represents peace and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those who God is pleased. Well done. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Is that yours, Joy? Yeah. Oh, it's oh. Running repairs. Do you want to go around and show everybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah you can do that in a minute because I'm going to use you to blow our candles out afterwards. Is that all right? So you're going to show everybody your mobile and we'll sing a song and then you can come back up here, yeah? Yeah. Right, I'll see you in a minute then. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oh. 
Thank you. 